a dream I know Deep up my feelings for you Hello reality viewers, welcome back again to Reality Latest Gist, the home of news and politics. For this channel, we they drop news every day and we they react to every video when it comes our way. And our reality news now we they drop for this channel and we they also they talk on as it be. If today not the first time we say they come across this channel, you are highly welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. And if you are returning subscribers, I appreciate all of you now for our massive support to this channel i say may god bless all of you now in jesus name amen i get video away i want to present to una this very moment and i'm going to follow now they watch the video after we don't watch them together make we drop our opinion constructively for the comment section like our videos and also share our videos if possible bye for now to have an end look at this guinean passport that bears his name in his INEC ec9 form he declared that he doesn't have another nationality apart from nigeria these forms are filled under oath. Is that not perjury? Yes, when you lie under oath, it is perjury. When it is proved that a candidate committed perjury in one of his forms or anywhere in the documents that he submitted, it can lead to an outright disqualification by the petitions tribunal that is handling the election. Let's take a closer look at this passport. It is written PD, which stands for Passport Diplomatique. So it's a diplomatic passport. As you know, Guinea is a West African francophone country. And coincidentally, considering the forfeiture that Tinubu made in the United States, he forfeited $460,000 being funds traced to narcotics trafficking. So why does Tinubu have the nationality of a narco state? Yes, Guinea was declared a narco state by the United Nations. Guinea is the only country in the world that have been so designated so why does Tinubu hold their citizenship? Let's go back to the passport. You become a citizen before you are issued a passport. It shows that he was born in Lagos and the nationality shows Guinean. Even Nigerians living abroad that acquire citizenship of the countries where they reside, they first of all acquire the citizenship and then go on to apply for the passport. The passport is just a document. It has nothing to do with the citizenship you acquired. In some countries in Europe and America, if you attain the number of years you are required to stay in the country, you have already attained and acquired the citizenship. It's left for you to make the formal application. If it is approved, some require you to take exams and all that. If it is eventually approved, you will now apply for passport to hold the passport of the country you've become the citizen. So if it is written on the passport that he is a Guinean, that means he has already acquired the citizenship of the country before receiving the passport in his name. So what does that mean? It means he lied on his INEC form EC9 that he had no prior citizenship apart from Nigeria. This passport expired in 2020, but is there any proof that Tinubu denounced his Guinean citizenship before filling his INEC EC9 form? Let's assume he worked for the Guinean government in any capacity and he was issued a diplomatic passport, it doesn't mean that his nationality must reflect Guinea on the passport. Take for instance an American that is working for the Nigerian government, maybe as a minister or as an advisor, and is issued a diplomatic passport. He doesn't automatically become a Nigerian citizen because he's working for the government. There's no law that says a foreigner can work in that capacity with the Nigerian government. So when such a person is issued with a Nigerian diplomatic passport, his nationality, which is American in this case, should still reflect on the passport. Yes, someone from another country can hold a diplomatic passport of a second country. It doesn't necessarily mean that he must be a citizen of the country he holds their diplomatic passport. An international passport is just a form of identity and a travel document. It has nothing to do with the nationality of the person. Of course, it is written there, but the process of acquiring the nationality of a country is different from the passport itself. Like already said, you can have a citizenship of a country. Unless you apply for their passport, you still don't possess that passport. It doesn't mean that you're not their citizen. There are two different things. According to this Daily Independent newspaper, in August of 2019, Alpha Conde the former president of Guinea came to Daura to meet Buhari to lobby him on Tinubu's behalf. So this proves that Alpha Conde and Tinubu know each other, they are friends. 
and Alpha Conde used his position as the president of Guinea to grant the Guinean nationality to Tinubu, which ultimately resulted in Tinubu receiving the diplomatic passport of Guinea. The main issue here is that Tinubu has or had in case he denounced the citizenship before filling his INEC EC9 form, which will result to perjury if it is proved in court. Now to the next challenge. How can the legal team of the opposition parties, the Labour Party legal team, the PDP legal team and all the other parties get their hands on a certified true copy of this passport? Although they have submitted their petitions, but they can still squeeze something in if there is new evidence. It looks like it might not be possible because considering the fact that Alpha Conde, although he's no longer the president, he is friends with Tinubu. If he still has his friends or colleagues or you know associates in power in Guinea, it might be nearly impossible to get a certified true copy of Tinubu's bio data page. 92, 93, 94, 95. The question now is why should Nigerians deal with the imposition of Tinubu? A man with so many baggages, you don't even know the one that will be revealed tomorrow. By the way, credit to David Hundeyin for revealing this. You don't know the ones that will be revealed tomorrow. He definitely didn't know that he will find himself one day in a political position. If he did in the 80s or the 70s, he should have been careful of his life. He should have avoided scandals or, you know, breaking the law. Even when you look at his associates, you find out that it is the same thing. They say that best of the same feather flock together. Look at the current Ogun State Governor. This is a man that was arrested for fraud in the 80s in the United States. Look at his charge sheet. You can see it here, he was in jail. They were still investigating to arrest his other associates involved in the same fraud. But eventually, they decided to make him a witness in order to jail his associates. So it doesn't still erase his character. It doesn't mean that the fact that he wasn't convicted, that he didn't do the crime. The Justice Department just decided to use him to save costs. Because when dealing with all these matters, they always try to save costs. Not that they can't continue investigating in order to nail his associates, but they decided to cut a deal. Why should such people be leading us in Nigeria? Executive office positions need people you can trust, people that have good character. Why should the worst of us be presiding over our affairs? Is it not chronism by politicians that they will be assembling and running behind people with dubious character? If Tinubu hadn't captured the resources of Lagos State, he wouldn't have been this wealthy in order to buy politicians buy his way through the primaries and even buy other people that he needs to rig the election in order to be declared winner. Another Tinubu's associate is the current speaker of the House of Reps. This guy has a conviction in the United States. He diverted his client's money and ran back to Nigeria to contest the election. As a result of his disappearance, he was convicted and derobed in the United States where he was practicing law. So these are the kind of characters, although he has repaid the money, but this kind of character, why should he be in leadership position when there are others that are sent, there are others that are clean and haven't committed any crime in the past that will live an exemplary life worth emulation by the citizens? Why should the worst of us always want to preside over us? Anyway, the judiciary should know that with circumstantial evidence that these people didn't win the election, that all the people that truly won the highest legal votes in Nigeria should be declared winner so that Nigeria can send a message to the world that we are not what they think we are, that we are not a banana republic where anything goes on, where breaking the law is of no consequence. So they should do the right thing because Nigeria have become a laughingstock since Tinubu's scandals broke. Thanks for watching.